just before I go on to talk about what the different branches supply, I'll go over triple A's, so abdominal, aortic, aneurysms. And to start with the basics, an aneurysm is any artery which is dilated to more than 50% of its original di diameter. And this dilation has to be abnormal, and that is usually the case. So the causes are usually atheroma, so um, the same kind of thing that causes um, aneurysms in the heart or in the brain will cause um, aneurysms in the abdomen. Trauma can also lead to aneurysms, as can connective tissue diseases um, and vasculitis. True aneurysms um, are something that are slightly different to pseudoaneurysms, um, and this has implications for the management of them as well. True aneurysm is where all three layers of the vessel wall, um, so the intima, the media, and the external, um, are all bulging out. Um, and this can be fusiform, so it's um, nice and round, um, or oval shaped. Um, and it can be um, a saccular, which is asymmetrical, so one side is bulging out. A pseudoaneurysm um, can happen when there is a hole and it collects some blood, so that might just be the outer layer, and there are different types of pseudoaneurysms. And usually the causes of the two are different as well. So a triple A um, is an aorta which is more than three centimetres. So a normal abdominal aorta is two centimetres in diameter, 50% of that is more than three. And there are different grades, um, and anything above five and a half centimetres will be classed as severe. And if you kind of measure out five and a half, that's quite a significant amount. And often patients are asymptomatic if it's not been complicated. So if they've just got this aneurysm that's bulging out there and it hasn't deteriorated in any further way, they may well be asymptomatic, they might not have any pain, and they might not notice anything wrong. And on examination, so on the abdominal examination, um, you will notice a pulsatile mass. So it will just be pulsing as any other artery would. And usually, abdominal aortic aneurysms are infrarenal. And um, triple A's are classified as being um, in relation to the renal arteries, usually. Um, so an infrarenal artery is most common. And then they tend to extend, so they might become juxtarenal, where they become right next to the renal vessels or the renal arteries um, and don't progress any further. Um, they may become pararenal, where they actually involve the takeoff of the renal arteries. And then they can become suprarenal, so where they extend above uh, and beyond the renal artery. So in terms of the complications of AAAs, this is where it might come up in your exams, um, especially as an acutely unwell patient presenting with abdominal pain. The first thing that they can cause is mass effect, and um, this is where they can exert some pressure, for example, on the nearby inferior vena cava, and um, result in disruption in that kind of way. They can also lead to aortoenteric fistulae, um, and this is where the aorta essentially forms a connection um, with part of the bowel, and obviously, you can then get blood coming through the bowel as well as bowel contents going up the um, aorta, which is not nice. Another not nice complication um, is rupture of the AAA. So this will quite obviously result in abdominal pain, and the mass will become expansile. So rather than just pulsing up and coming back down on abdominal examination, it will continue pulsing out. Um, and usually the patients that this happens to um, have quite large triple A's, um, and the patient, it usually occurs in patients who are more than 50, um, and usually isn't so common in patients under that age. Ruptures quite often result in hemodynamic collapse, um, because they bleed so much and there's so much space in the abdominal cavity, they might bleed several litres and then go into um, shock. This um, is a CT scan. I appreciate it's not the greatest quality. It shows quite a significant... Um, bleed of the abdominal aorta. Um, so you can see the aorta will be here on the left and there's just a huge sack of blood. And because it's intraperitoneal, there's a lot of space for it to expand into until it ends up resulting in a mass effect and resulting in pain for the patient. So how do, how do we manage triple A's? Um, another thing that we can use in triple A's that we also use in blunt trauma is the FAST scan again. So we're looking for blood in the intraperitoneal space. We resuscitate the patient and this is the ABCDE approach. 
so I don't think you will have accounted it much. And this essentially means um, looking at the airway, the breathing, circulation, disability, and then everything else. And the main aspect that obviously we'd be concerned with is circulation. And usually in a patient who's hemodynamically unstable, we try and restore the blood pressure to normal and get the heart rate back to normal. Um, and if the patient's bleeding a lot, giving them plenty of blood. In these patients, um, and in patients with other significant bleeds as well, there is a principle called controlled hypotension. And this is where you ensure that the patient's not in shock. You ensure that their end organs, so their brain and their heart and their kidneys, are getting enough blood to continue functioning. But you also ensure that you're not increasing the blood pressure so much that they'll end up reopening a bleed or they'll keep bleeding and just lose all that blood that you've just given them. There are two main methods of actually repairing the bleed. The first is an open repair, so this is the traditional way of cutting the patient open. You put a clamp on the top, um, put a graft inside the abdominal aorta, and then you open up the clamp and let the blood flow again. The other is an endovascular, again within a vessel, um, aneurysm repair, and this is called an EVA. And this is where a stent is inserted endovascularly, and it prevents flow to the aneurysm.